Welcome back to Art This Week. This week we are going to be creating a piece of op art or optical illusion art that looks like this. So I'm going to have you get your supplies ready and I'm going to teach you a little bit more about what op art is before we get started. Op art is short for optical art. The word optical is used to describe things that relate to how we see. Have you seen an optical illusion before? Op art works in a similar way. Artists use shapes, colors, and patterns in special ways to create images that look as if they are moving or blurring or three-dimensional. Often it's in black and white, but not always. Op art tends to confuse and excite the eye to bring a static or flat image to life. Some of the op art examples may even cause queasiness or discomfort, but they definitely push the boundaries of what we perceive. Op art started in the 1960s with the work of Bridget Riley and continued with other artists such as Victor Vassarelli, Richard Allen, and M.C. Escher. M.C. Escher was actually one of the earliest of these artists. He was creating some of this artwork in the 1940s. You'll notice in these pieces, you can't really tell what's happening. Are the people going up the stairs or down? Op art is like that. It confuses and makes us wonder what is really there. Today, we're going to create a piece of op art that, makes, that looks as though there is a three-dimensional sphere in the front of it. So let's get started. All right, for, so for our piece of artwork today, you are going to need a bowl or some sort of circle to trace. Um, it doesn't have to be super duper big. You can have it be about this size or smaller, um, but you don't want it to cover too much of your paper. And I'm using a black colored pencil. You could also use a regular colored pencil if you like, or even a colored colored pencil. But I'm going to make my lines with a black colored pencil. I'm going to try to um, center it on my page from left to right. I would have your paper go vertical. Um, center it from left to right, but I'm going to make mine a little bit higher up. I'm not going to make it exactly in the center. I just think it will be a little bit more interesting if I have it up a little higher. So I'm going to start by making my circle. All the way around and then I'm done with my bowl. All right so at this point what we are going to do is we need to make our background grid and we need to make the grid on our circle and in order to make them different in order to make this circle look like it's really coming off the page we want to have that grid be different because we want our circle to look like it has a curvature to it like it's actually a sphere. So I'm going to start um, by doing my background grid first what I'm going to do is I'm going to line my ruler up to the edge of the paper so it's straight and I'm just going to use my ruler to uh, make a straight line but also to measure out my grid so that the grid is about the same. This first one you can see I just go across the edge so I'm just going to be able to make a line straight up. My next line, I'm going to line this line up to here, do my best to keep it straight and this time I am going to make my line go to the circle hop over the circle and go down to the bottom and then we're going to do it again and again until we finish vertically. All right, now I'm going to make my horizontal lines and I'm going to do the exact same thing all the way up, um, skipping my circle also. Okay, now the next part I have to do is I have to make my sphere look like it's rounded and this is the part that can be a little bit tricky. Since mine was right in the middle or just about exactly in the middle, you can see that the center of my circle falls right about between these two lines. So I'm going to put my ruler here and I'm going to make um, a really light pencil line right smack dab in the middle but I'm gonna erase it later. So I'm just making it super duper light. It's kind of in the middle. I didn't even do a very good job, so I'm gonna redo that. All right, so now I've got a, light, um, a line there right about in the middle. And what we're gonna do now is I'm going to mimic the curve of this, but I'm going to start a little bit out from the top and I'm going to, maybe I'll put a dot here and a dot here and then I'm going to make a curve that comes out on that side, right? And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. 
about the same distance away. It doesn't have to be perfect, which is good because mine aren't perfect. But I'm going to make the next one and the next one like that, and then I'll do the other side. Sometimes I find it's easier for me to do it that way, so I'm going to turn my paper. All right, now I've got this big empty space in the middle, so I'm going to actually make two that are a little bit closer here in the middle. Like that. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing, but the other way. So I'm going to put my line, up, as best as I can tell, a really light pencil line. I might not even need to erase it because it might not matter, but and then we're going to start from there. got my circle. So that was the hardest part um, and it didn't even take us very long. So what we're going to do next is you are going to choose what you want to use to color in your um, optical illusion and what you're going to do is you're going to color every other. So I think I'm going to use a marker. Um, I'm a little bit, I think that colored pencil would look really nice but it would also take a while. So I'm gonna use a marker. And what I'm gonna do first is I am going to put a dot in every other square. And I'm gonna be super careful and slow so that I know which squares I'm supposed to color. So I'm gonna start on the side and I'm gonna go every other. And then these are next to each other, so I don't wanna do that one, I wanna do this one. And I'm gonna go every other. And this is a tiny one, but I am gonna color it. So I'm gonna put a dot there. And this one also is tiny up at the top, but I'm going to do that one too. So you can go every other side to side. You can go every other, however you like, but you need to make sure you do it in an organized way so that you don't get messed up. Nothing, something, nothing. So that's a little bit funny, but that's okay. So that's the outside of my grid. I have to do the same thing in here, okay? But just to make sure you remember, this line is not a line. I'm not gonna use that line in the middle. Or this line here. So you might wanna erase yours just so you know where you're gonna make your grid. And then carefully, I'm gonna start down the center. I'm gonna say I want the center one to be colored. So then not colored, colored, not colored, colored. I think that's pretty good. If you want to, you can do that first with a pencil because I almost made some mistakes as I was going. So you can do yours with a pencil, and then you're going to get coloring. When I color with markers, I like to use the side of the marker, and I like to go around the box, and then back and forth. And it just fills it in nice and neat. Alright, great. So now that you have colored the whole thing, we are going to add a little bit of a shadow. So I want to point out to you, if I take my bowl back and put it here, I'm sitting near a window and there's light coming over from this side over here, and so you're going to see a shadow on this side. So if we want to make it look like our sphere is sticking out from the paper and it's 3D, then we have to pick a side on which to make a shadow.
And so I'm gonna choose this side over here and I'm gonna make a shadow around like a third or close to a half of my drawing. And you can choose again to go with a black colored pencil or you could use a black crayon for this. So what I would encourage you to do is I would just encourage you to, with that black crayon or colored pencil, trace the edge of your circle, but not the whole way around, just where you want to show that there's a shadow, like that. So I've got it almost halfway. And then I'm going to make my shadow a little wider. So I'm just going to really gently add some shadow there. You could make it go all the way around if you want. You could just do this line all the way around. You can kind of experiment to see what you think looks best. But just remember that if it were sitting, um, a sphere sitting on top of something else, you would see a shadow on part, around part of it. So you can make it really dark at the edge and then slowly get a little lighter. And that is gonna make it look more like an optical illusion. So congratulations, you did it. This project does not take super long. It took me about a half an hour from start to finish, but it is a little bit hard on your hand doing all that markering. So what I would suggest is take 10 minutes and do the drawing with the grid. Then I would say take a break, come back to it, maybe the next day or maybe just later. Do your background squares, and then do your inside squares and just take a break in between so that you don't get really tired. You can get do one part of it on each day and you'll still be done by Wednesday if you get started on Monday. So have fun. I hope that you enjoy it and we'll see you for it again next week.